my name's John Shill. I'm based in Singapore. I'm uh, a technology consultant and I want to talk to you about something that's half a world away. In fact, I came from half a world away just uh, just yesterday morning, so I'm still slightly in a different uh, time zone. I'm very excited to talk to you guys though. So we hear a lot about open banking in, in Europe and um, uh, and you, you're probably well, well aware of the regulations here and how that's uh, given a kickstart to um, the uh, <coughs> the opening of the uh, of the financial ecosystem. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the Asia Pacific because it's there isn't one regulator. Uh, I guess like Europe, there are lots of different cultures and uh, different ways of doing business, but you have the advantage of having one one regulator who, who decides um, what to do. And in Asia Pacific, you have this mix of, of cultures and economies and different speeds of economies, some highly developed ones, some very developing ones. But you also have uh, varying approaches across the region to, to regulation. So just um, to give you an idea of some of the contrast, I'm not sure how clearly that comes out. On the left, you see um, statistics from the Capgemini World Wealth, Wealth Report. There are something like five and a half million uh, high net worth individuals uh, in, um, in Asia Pacific and that number is growing all the time. Uh, in contrast, on the right-hand side, you see there are still a very large number of people who do not have a bank account. And although that, uh, the number of people who have a, a bank account or access to a payment system is growing, it's still um, quite striking that in places like uh, Indonesia, half of adults still do not have a, um, a bank account and even fewer in, in places like the Philippines. The, um, but, I, but I talked about... So when we talk about open banking, there are different objectives of each regulator in each country. Some are very, very highly advanced, so they're thinking about very similar things to what regulator, uh, regulators here are thinking about. And whereas in developing economies, they're, they're thinking about financial inclusion and access to, um, to, to the finance system. So I want to start perhaps with quite an advanced economy, Singapore. Singapore has been um, very, very keen on uh, open banking for some time. The Monetary Authority of Singapore two years ago published uh, their Finance as a Service API playbook, which is a 600 page document outlining how APIs could be used to, um, to drive innovation in, uh, in, in finance across all the different segments, not just retail banking, but um, commercial, corporate banking, institutional banking, insurance, wealth management. And uh, while the MAS did not require banks to open APIs, they did strongly encourage it, and uh, they've uh, they've been very active in developing a, a fintech ecosystem in Singapore to the point where just last month at the Singapore Fintech Festival there were something like 30,000 people came through this uh, through this festival this week-long festival and um, it I guess it shows the the vibrance of the um, the ecosystem that is is uh, fostering being fostered in inside Singapore I want to in addition to the idea of APIs, well, the uh, Singapore has also been make, making sure that its domestic payments infrastructure is uh, is very fast. They call it fast. It's uh, this was instituted back in um, 2012, and the uh, all the domestic banks uh, in Singapore are connected. Uh, 
in, in real time you can transfer money from from one uh, account with one bank to an account in another bank in, in just a couple of seconds. And on top of that infrastructure, they've introduced um, uh, Pay Now, which is where you don't even know, need to know uh, the recipient's uh, bank account number. You only need to know either their, their mobile phone number or their, um, their, their ID number, their, their Singaporean ID number. In um, Monetary Authority of Singapore, or the government, the Singapore government has not stopped there. So there's a, uh, the My Info service is a government service that helps uh, citizens and residents to consent to share their data that the government has with uh, a, um, an approved partner like a bank or an insurance company. And something that's very new is networked trade platform, which is digitizing the, uh, the trade and logistics uh, ecosystem. I want to just talk briefly about the, um, the, the MAS API playbook, because I think that as a, even though it's about two years old and there have been a lot of ad advances in uh, open banking uh, around the world, this is still a good uh, framework for how you think about what is needed in um, a uh, banking API. So there's, um, th they've categorised in, in, into these six categories. So there's one, one set of, of APIs for uh, retrieving product information, and this is very important for, say, comparison sites uh, to be able to retrieve information about financial products from, from providers. The, the marketing is more about uh, linkage with, with partners and managing leads. The sales collection is a collection of, um, of APIs to generate quotes for uh, financial products, be it uh, in insurance or, or others, and to actually initiate the, the onboarding process. Uh, servicing is about retrieving account information, and I, I guess this is what uh, the likes of the Open Banking Initiative in the UK and, and PSD2 are aiming to, to achieve is the ability to uh, a actually give um, customers the ability to access their information and, and to share it and uh, to initiate transactions. Uh, payments, um, pretty self-explanatory. I will say that since this document was written a couple of years ago, there have been a number of use cases that have come up around payments that um, perhaps weren't anticipated um, uh, initially when, um, when this document was published. And regulatory is more about how governments should, regulators should publish APIs to make it easier for financial institutions to report to them. Um, the Singapore MyInfo uh, service is, um, I think, is something that a lot of countries would be really proud to have because it, uh, it reduces the amount of paperwork, the paper documentation that customers need to show when they apply for a bank account or an insurance policy or, or a new financial product. So you look at this uh, flow, anyone who's seen an, an OAuth um, uh, flow would would recognize this type of thing so the um, the authorization is conducted through an OAuth 2.0 process and uh, SingPass which is the uh, the, the country's um, digital identity um, <coughs> service enables um, the the customer to authenticate with the government's uh, SingPass prior to consenting to their information being shared with, uh, with the financial institution. So that's Singapore. In Hong Kong, just this year, uh, Hong Kong have issued their API framework, which and, and actually has a, a roadmap for, for implementation. So phase one is that they're, they're going to require uh, financial institutions to make available product information through through APIs, quite quite a logical step, followed by uh, the customer ac acquisition um, and uh, new product applications in in phase two. The accessing of the account information and uh, and 
uh, initiating trans transaction processing is something that I haven't worked out the time frame for yet. They're going to see what happens with phase one and two before they advance to that, to that next step. As a way of showing the, uh, the, the finance community that they, they're serious about this, well, the Ho Hong Kong Monetary Authority themselves have also published APIs that enable um, uh, firms to, to access mar market data and statistics. So they're, they're fairly, fairly advanced. In Australia, the Australia, uh, Australian regulator has adopted more or less the, uh, the UK's open banking uh, initiative. They're calling it the consumer data right because they see it as more than banking. They're starting with banking, but the, the idea is that uh, it will give customers, individuals and businesses, the ability to control uh, how their data is shared and, and with whom, and to find out their, their data. Their, their timetable for this is starting with banking, so many people in Australia refer to it as open banking. Um, and the big four uh, Australian banks need to publish their APIs um, by the, the middle of 2019, with the rest of the deposit-taking institutions, uh, building societies, credit unions, and so on, following a, a year later. The, the idea is to go from, is start with banking, but then move to uh, the, the same consumer data right for telecommunications carriers and for utilities and uh, healthcare and, and government. So um, I should also mention that Japan has, has changed their, their Banking Act to require um, 80 banks to uh, open their, their payments network by, uh, by 2020. I think the, the year 2020 is significant for them because of the, uh, the Tokyo Olympics and they want to, um, they want to show that um, the uh, they, they want to showcase their digital payments uh, ability in a, in a society that has been very, uh, very cash focused for a, for a very long time. But I've classified some of these regulator initiatives in terms of whether they are um, mandating or requiring change or whether they're encouraging or whether they're still exploring. So I talked about Singapore and Hong Kong, quite developed economies, but the regulator has um, the regulator has not um, pushed a, a fast timetable for, for implementation the way, um, uh, the way Australia and Japan have. Malaysia has, is at the exposure draft stage and um, uh, other, other regulators in, in Thailand, Indonesia and New Zealand are perhaps focus a little bit more on, on the payment system than in the, um, and then specifically open APIs. I, I should also say that in Australia, they've recently implemented a new payments platform. Yeah, sorry, you have a question. Um, I, I think some of the incentives, uh, I, I guess, for the the, um, I'm actually a little surprised at how many of the banks in Singapore have opened their APIs. So if you look at this, uh, there's, and I have a, a slide next, but it's uh, uh, City Standard Chartered, um, OCBC, and um, and and DBS have all published APIs. Is Interesting that one of the other large banks, UOB, has not. They they, they treat as um, their, their APIs as private APIs, so they don't have a public-facing developer portal. Um, so clearly, the the government is not pressing them to to publish now. I think it's more a matter of that they, they want to show that um, the 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 financial institutions that there is something in it for them in engaging with uh, 
uh, fintech partners and uh, cross-industry partnerships. So it's um, I, I actually if I if I go to the next slide, uh, what I what I think is interesting is that the countries that have set a strong timetable have um, have fewer API have fewer developer pu portals published than the ones that are sort of in encouraging. So you can see just uh, across the top here, um, I mentioned City, DBS, OCBC, Standard Chartered have all published open APIs uh, in Singapore, and um, these firms also operate in in Hong Kong. So the um, the, the the knowledge is there. Cities have certainly published uh, their their developer portal is available for countries globally, and uh, and HSBC. Um, is, uh, has a strong presence in, in Hong Kong and, and also makes their uh, developer portal available. In, in Malaysia, there's, there's one bank, uh, Maybank, who has uh, published a developer portal. In Indonesia, there's one. In Thailand, there are two, and um, that, that's Bangkok Bank and uh, Kasakon. Japan, I've only found one developer portal which is a little interesting given uh, their, their mandate. Um, in Australia, um, NAB is currently the only, um, of the, uh, only one of the big four that has published a developer portal. Macquarie is, uh, is a bit more of a niche player um, th than that. And ASB and Westpac, they're actually the New Zealand subsidiaries of the Australian banks. And they've published a developer portal because they feel there's good business rather than being pushed, wait, waiting to be pushed by the regulator. The other ones I've shown here, um, Yes Bank in India, uh, JS Bank in Pakistan, and Nations Trust Bank in Sri Lanka. Sorry. Okay. So um, in addition to the banks, there are a number of firms that have adopted a, a plug-and-play model. They want to be um, plugged into the, the finance ecosystem and the payments players uh, globally, uh, the, the global ones like, like Visa and, uh, and MasterCard and PayPal, uh, also operate in, in Singapore. They, they have actually a strong developer presence in Singapore that engages with, uh, with partners around the region. And their, their motivation is to, I, I guess their, their enemy is cash, and uh, so they want to digitise payments as much as they can. But the challenge is, of course, for the payments model is in advanced economies where there's um, a lot of, lot of e-commerce that's um, that's well well established, but in the more developing economies, getting a merchant um, activated is um, is is still a challenge, and they they need to think of innovative ways of, of overcoming that. In insurance, AXA uh, have adopted a um, a plug and play model so that uh, firms can. Other firms can sell insurance through them, e-commerce firms, retailers, and, and so on. And there are a couple of local players or regional players that, um, that are adopting a, a similar sort of model. Um, and robo-advisors who want to partner and help um, larger institutions to fill out their, um, their investment offering. Um, need to be able to integrate with uh, the financial institutions. So firms like Bamboo um, are, are adopting that and publishing APIs. Um, and another, uh, I, I talked about the objective of financial inclusion. So the um, the the IMF and the um, ASEAN Bankers Association have uh, recently launched what they, they call the uh, ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, which is, uh, its aim is to improve financial inclusion by creating um, a, a platform and a marketplace for firms that have published APIs to, um, to find firms that are interested in consuming services. And the, their aim is to do that across, uh, across the region and to harmonise the, the regulations around that. So they've launched the um, uh, APEX platform and provided a range of tools for discovery, experimentation and so on. So the, the, um, 
the aim of this is, is clearly around those large number of people who either don't have a bank account or have only recently got a bank account and are interested in um, gathering, uh, having access to other financial services, more advanced financial services like insurance and investment. Okay, so I mentioned there are some challenges, but challenges are really just opportunities for some great solutions. And these are the sorts of areas where uh, technology and, and improved processes can, uh, can make a, a difference. Financial, institute, financial inclusion, um, the onboarding process, I mentioned Singapore's My Info service, um, but the foundation of that has to start with a, um, a digital identity. Well, in some, some countries have, have been working on that. India has um, a, um, a digital identity uh, program called ADA, and Indonesia is a little bit behind with theirs, but they, they also have one. And uh, distribution is a challenge for firms where uh, is a cash-based society. Simply increasing the number of physical branches is, uh, 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 is, is unrealistic. But uh, with the high adoption rate of, of smartphones, they're really looking at um, digital distribution models, but also in-person, uh, agent-based, um, or with uh, partnerships with ride-sharing firms. There are a, a couple of large uh, regional players in, in ride-sharing that um, and, and telecommunications carriers that can enable um, that um, that ability to connect with people who who um, don't normally have bank accounts, and uh, and and credit assessment is probably the other big challenge in developing countries because people haven't had bank accounts, they don't have a credit history, and there isn't a, a great credit reporting uh, regime. But this is really an opportunity to find some alternative uh, credit models. So. I want to um, by, uh, conclude by saying that uh, if you come to Singapore next April, you'll be able to come to API Days in, in Singapore. And uh, we're going to talk, we're going to have speakers on, on a range of these, uh, these topics. Um, Mehdi mentioned uh, at the opening that, uh, that I'm, I'm helping to, to organise the, the Singapore event. So um, certainly uh, look up the, uh, keep, keep tabs on the, on the URL and uh, hope to see you in Singapore in April. Thank you. Thank you.